Is your child anxious, worrisome, or fearful? Has your child been diagnosed with generalized anxiety, separation anxiety, or social phobia? Did your child's therapist recommend the use of Coping Cat or Camp Cope a lot? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you have came to the correct place. Hello, I'm Danielle. And I'm Heather. And we are students in the School of Psychology graduate program at UCO. We are here to help you navigate through the use of Coping Cat with your child who has been diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. This is an informational video only. It is of the utmost importance. You follow the instructions of your child's therapist throughout the therapeutic process. We will start with what anxiety may look like in your child and the impacts of anxiety on your child. First, we will talk a little bit about separation anxiety disorder, also known as SAD. SAD is the only anxiety disorder specific to children and is associated with fears about leaving familiar people, usually parents. In extreme situations, children might refuse to leave their home or not want to stay overnight with a friend. Sometimes they may refuse to go to school, a pattern often termed school phobia, although school refusal is more accurate. It is not unusual for preschool children to express separation anxiety, but persistent or extreme separation anxiety is atypical for school-age children and may reflect concerns about family matters, safety, or fears of social rejection. And now we're going to talk about social phobia. Children who have excessive fear and anxiety about being in social situations and being evaluated by others are experiencing social phobia. The fear of social, social situations is out of proportion to the actual situation, although some children may not be able to identify specific stressors. The typical age of onset is in adolescence or early adulthood, although shyness and social discomfort may be seen as early as two or three years of age. Typically, onset is gradual without obvious triggering events. And lastly, we will talk about generalized anxiety disorder, or GAD for short. GAD is associated with pervasive and high levels of anxiety across a variety of situations with no apparent events that trigger it. It is the most common childhood anxiety disorder and tends to persist to some degree into adulthood. These children often are described as high strung and are often very concerned about doing things well. They may show perfectionist tendencies. The tendency to worry about relatively minor things is a primary defining feature of GAD. Children with GAD tend to stay in a relatively high state of physical arousal and often appear stressed much of the time. GAD also tends to be chronic and does not dissipate without, over time without help, perhaps requiring professional intervention. So now we're going to talk about what it may look like in your child. Your child may have learning and concentration problems such as memory problems, attention problems, problem solving difficulties and worry, or behavioral concerns such as restlessness, fidgeting, task avoidance, rapid speech, <clears throat> irritability, withdrawal, perfectionism, lack of participation, failing to complete some tasks, seeking easy tasks, or physical concerns such as stomach discomfort, rapid heart rate, flushing of the skin, perspiration, headaches, muscle tension, sleep problems, and nausea. A child or adolescent may have an anxiety disorder if anxiety is causing persistent problems. Several types of anxiety disorders exist, impairing social, personal, and academic functioning. The frequency of anxiety disorders range from about 3% to 20% of children and adolescents. In infancy and preschool children, anxiety disorders are infrequent. They most often start to emerge in early childhood and may persist into adulthood. The frequency of anxiety disorders in boys and girls is about the same during elementary school years, but differences between them emerge in adolescents, with girls being two to three times more likely to develop anxiety disorders. With a 10% frequency rate, a middle school class of 30 students could have as many as three students with an anxiety disorder and perhaps two of them would be girls. So now we're going to talk about some effects on school performance. Highly anxious children tend to struggle with various demands of school and to be inattentive, perfectionistic, forgetful, or unwilling to participate due to concerns about failure or embarrassment. They may avoid difficult tasks, seek easy tasks, and not volunteer or readily participate in classroom activities. Because withdrawal is a typical response to avoid feeling anxious, anxious children may per be perceived by teachers as unmotivated, lazy, or uninterested in school. In fact, the majority of these children want to do well and be involved, but the motivation to avoid feeling anxious is high. Now we're going to talk about effects on social performance. 
Anxious children tend to withdraw socially to avoid experiencing anxiety, which leads to further problems of fitting in and making and sustaining friendships. Over time, more social problems and deficits may occur, making the situation worse. Avoidance and worry may offer short-term solutions but have cumulative negative effects and provide little long-term relief. We now have a strong foundation of what anxiety is and how it may look in your child and its effects on academic and social performance. We will now look at the Coping Cat program. Coping Cat was developed by Dr. Philip Kendall for children between the ages of 7 and 18 who struggle with generalized anxiety, separation anxiety, or social anxiety. There are 50 minute sessions once a week for 16 sessions. The program places an emphasis on the use of activities to help youth learn the cognitive behavioral model. As opposed to teaching the child about feelings, thoughts, and behaviors didactically, the therapist and child discover these concepts through play. The Coping Cat program is a cognitive behavioral therapy that combines behavioral strategies such as modeling relaxation, in vivo exposure tasks, and contingency management with cognitive strategies such as problem solving, appraisal of personal abilities, and perceived threat to help children cope with anxiety. The first eight sessions focus on anxiety management skills such as identifying somatic cues of anxious arousal, identifying anxious self-talk, and developing coping self-talk, problem solving to cope with anxiety-provoking situations, and using self-evaluation and self-reward. Progressive muscle relaxation, coping modeling, and role play are provided. In the second eight sessions, the therapist guides the child through a hierarchy of exposure tasks to increasingly difficult anxiety-provoking situations. Throughout, children are encouraged to practice at home through homework assignments. Session four and nine are held with parents. During these sessions, therapists introduce parents to the CBT model and obtain information from parents about primary concerns and goals. Parents are not treated as co-clients, but are consultants to the child's treatment and are asked to provide some collaboration and assistance in planning exposure tasks and homework. The overall goal is to teach children to recognize signs of unwanted anxious arousal and to let these signs serve as cues for the use of anxiety management strategies. Their greatest emphasis within the treatment program is placed upon the following general strategies. Graduated sequence of training tasks and assignments, role playing procedures, coping modeling, homework assignments or show that I can tasks, effective education, awareness of body reactions when anxious, relaxation training, identification and modification of anxious self-talk, contingent rewards, practice of newly acquired skills in increasingly anxiety-provoking situations, both imaginal and in vivo, and design and completion of a de child-developed commercial. So session one is an introduction. It's a fun and relaxed session where your child gets to know the therapist they will be working with. They can play a personal facts game where both the child and the therapist answer the same questions like what is your middle name or what is your favorite color. They will engage in getting to know you activities that are lighthearted and fun. During this session, the therapist will begin to get a feel for what specifically gives your child anxiety. The therapist will orient the child to the program by giving a brief overview and providing reasons that the program will be helpful to them. For example, it helps some kids with having a hard time giving a speech. It provides coping strategies for that. The therapist encouraged the child to participate as well as assign the initial simple show that I can task and introduce the point system. And they will engage in a fun end of session activity that takes about five to 10 minutes, like playing a video game, that are a game not a video game or engage in a fun activity that was selected by the child at the beginning of the session in the second session the therapist will help the child identify different types of feelings and to distinguish anxious and worried feelings from other types of feelings they will normalize feelings of fear and anxiety. The child will begin to identify their own specific somatic responses to anxiety and begin to develop a hierarchy of anxiety provoking situations. They'll start off the session by reviewing the previous, e previous week's show that I can task and start off by introducing the concept that different feelings have different physical expressions. They'll discuss the idea that people's bodies can do different things in response to different feelings and that different facial expressions and postures are clues of their feelings.
The child will then list as many feelings as they can think of in their workbook and try to assess which feeling the child is most comfortable talking about. Then they'll differentiate and label feelings by using pictures of people showing different expressions in the Coping Cat workbook, both facial and whole body, that reflect different emotions and discuss what type of feeling each person might be experiencing. The therapist will then introduce the concept of role-playing feelings to the child. They will act out several different types of physically expressive emotions and take turns guessing the emotion. The therapist then will then normalize the experience of anxiety and fears by initiating a discussion to reassure the child that all people have fears and anxieties, including adults, their parents, or superheroes, and that the purpose of this program is to help them learn to recognize distress and cope with it effectively. We all feel anxious at various times, but some of us are better than others at knowing what to do when it happens. We don't expect to eliminate all fear, but that we will be able to manage it and cope with it. The therapist will help the child to construct a hierarchy of anxiety-provoking situations by discussing the specifics of the child's anxieties, including the types of situations that provoke anxiety, the child's reactions to anxiety, including somatic and cognitive thoughts, and the child's response in the anxiety-provoking situations. The therapist will introduce the subject units of distress skill, which is a feelings thermometer. It ranges from zero to eight and determines which situations are more anxiety provoking for the child. The therapist will ask the child, how much anxiety do you feel when blank? Give it a number. The therapist and child begin to construct a brief hierarchy of the situations that seem to provoke anxiety in the child and they will record these on the situation cards or the fear ladder, which can be seen later in the child workbook. And then finally, they will assign the show that I can task for the next session. In session three, they will review distinguishing anxious and worried feelings from other types of feelings. The child will learn more about somatic responses to anxiety and identify their own specific somatic responses. They'll start off by reviewing the show that I can task from the previous week. Then they'll discuss specific somatic reactions to anxiety and introduce the variety of somatic feelings that are associated with anxiety including butterflies in the stomach, heart beating fast, flushing of the face, trembling, among other things. They'll tell a story about people caught in an anxiety provoking situation and how each one feels during the experience. The therapist will ask the child to identify the kinds of somatic responses they have heard about or experienced in anxiety provoking situations. Then they'll practice identifying some somatic responses by using an imaginary procedure that the therapist has set up it is a low anxiety situation and they will model recognition of their own physical response. So they'll say something like, there's that feeling in my stomach again. Then using the feelings barometer, the therapist will record their own level of anxiety. Then the therapist will set up a similar situation for the child to role play with the therapist where the child describes what they are feeling. The therapist will ask the child to compare the difference in feelings between the low level of anxiety and the higher levels. Next, the therapist will introduce the F-step. The therapist introduces the child to the idea of a four-step coping plan called the fear plan. The first step is the F-step, feeling frightened. As part of the F-step, the child distinguishes anxious feelings, monitors their somatic responses and associated with the anxiety and asks themselves, am I feeling frightened? How does my body feel? Then the therapist will prepare the child for the upcoming parent session. The child is reminded that the next meeting will be held with their parents and the therapist reassures the child that they will not share during the parent session personal information they have disclosed. Then they will wrap it up by assigning the next show that I can task. Session four is the parent meeting. The therapist will provide the parents with information about the treatment, including an outline of the program and generally explain where the child is in the treatment process and what will happen next. The therapist will provide the parents an opportunity to discuss their concerns about the child or about factors that could affect the child's difficulties and ability to benefit from the treatment program.
The therapist also has the opportunity to learn more about the situations in which the child becomes anxious. They will also offer the parents other specific ways the parents can be involved in the program, such as sitting in at the end of session of five where they can learn about and assist their child in practicing relaxation skills. And finally, the session concludes with addressing any concerns the parents may feel uncomfortable about sharing in front of their child. During session five, the child and the therapist will review the somatic clues that indicate that the child is tense and anxious. The therapist will introduce relaxation training and its use in controlling tension associated with anxiety. They'll start off by reviewing the show that I can task and acknowledge the parent session. Then the therapist will introduce the idea that many somatic feelings associated with anxiety involve mus muscle tension and suggests that when a person becomes anxious, some parts of their body are tense or tight and that the somatic responses are linked to that tension. Then the idea of relaxation will be introduced by practicing relaxation techniques. The therapist will ask the child to imagine a time where they were really calm and happy. They will imagine themselves in that scene and focus on how their body felt. Then the therapist will ask the child to imagine feeling tense and describe an anxiety provoking situation and ask the child to imagine themselves in that scene. The child is instructed to pay attention to their somatic responses so that they will know which parts of their body become tense. And then they will compare feeling tense to feeling relaxed. Next, they will talk about deep breathing. The therapist will dim the lights in the room and have the child find a comfortable position. The therapist will then tell the child that they will be doing an exercise to help them learn to relax and ask the child to close their eyes. And tell the child to take a deep breath in and try to make their stomach expand like a blowing up a balloon. Then to let it out slowly, focusing on how their body feels as the air comes out. They will repeat this process three to five times. The therapist will ask the child to focus on how their body feels after the deep breaths, noticing the relaxed feelings. Taking a deep breath may be a useful first coping strategy in an anxiety provoking situation. Something else they'll learn is progressive muscle relaxation. The therapist will ask the child to tighten their fist for five seconds and then relax it to the count of five, focusing on the relaxed warm feeling in their hands following it into their arms and continuing to follow it as it works its way through the body. Continuing focusing on different parts of the body, they will spend about 15 minutes doing this. Then the therapist will ask the child to track their feelings with the SUDS rating. The therapist will then give the child some relaxation materials and aids, such as an audio file, where the therapist walks the child through relaxation. They will then develop the child's awareness of how and when relaxation might be useful. It might not, they might not be able to listen to the tape and do the full exercise in real life situations, but a few deep breaths can be helpful. They will practice more relaxation for the coping model and role play the relaxation in an anxiety provoking situation. And then if the parents are available, they will practice the relaxation with the parents. At the end, they will assign the show that I can task for session five. Session six focuses on identifying anxious self-talk and learning to challenge those thoughts. The therapist will introduce the function of personal thoughts and their impact on response in anxiety provoking situations. They will help the child begin to recognize their self-talk in anxious situations and help them begin to develop and use coping self-talk. They will review relaxation training as well as the show that I can task from session five. The therapist will then introduce the concept of thoughts or self-talk by suggesting to the child that they now know when they become anxious and that there are some thoughts that probably occur along with the feelings. They can do this by having the child engage in a thought bubble activity, which has a cartoon and empty bubbles. Together with the therapist, the child fills in the possible thoughts for different cartoons. The cartoons portray fairly simple scenes in which the character's thoughts are likely to be fairly obvious and include a number of different types of feelings. The therapist will then help the child engage in self-talk in low stress situations by describing some fairly concrete and non-stressful or slightly stressful situations. For example, dropping your pencil on the floor or your mom is serving broccoli for dinner and you don't like it. The child is then asked to give a sample thought that would accompany these events. 
So what would they write in that bubble? The therapist would then help the child self-talk in low stress, ambiguous situations by presenting a non-stressful, fairly ambiguous situation. The therapist works with the child to suggest that depending on what thought the person had, their behaviors could vary. The therapist then will discuss self-talk in anxiety-provoking situations by using cartoons or magazines to present characters in low anxiety-provoking situations. The therapist will suggest possible thoughts that the character might have and then ask the child to make similar suggestions for other cartoons or pictures. The therapist will then work with the child to differentiate anxious self-talk from coping self-talk. The therapist will again present the pictures of people in cartoons in low anxiety situations, but this time ask the child to think of thoughts that would lead the character to experience more distress and would help the character reduce their stress. By using this example, the therapist introduces the idea of coping self-talk or thoughts to help people reduce stress in anxious situations. The therapist and the child then discuss how the character might change his behavior depending on the way he thought about what happened. The therapist will then introduce the child to the second step, which is the E step, expecting bad things to happen. Part of the E step is monitoring their thoughts associated with anxiety and asking themselves, what is my self-talk? What am I expecting to happen? It will illustrate how if someone is thinking negative thoughts, the person can attempt to reduce their distress through changing the self-talk to coping self-talk. They will practice coping self-talk and practice using the first two steps together. So for feeling frightened, they'll have the child ask themselves, am I feeling frightened? What's happening in my body? And then for the E step, expecting bad things to happen, they will have the child ask themselves, what is my self-talk? What am I expecting to happen? Then after that, they will gather evidence for the thought by asking, do I know for sure this is going to happen? What else might happen? What has happened before? Has this happened to anyone I know? And having collected all of the evidence, they'll ask, how likely is it to happen? What is a coping thought I could have? What is a coping thought I can have in this situation? What is the worst thing that could happen? And what would be so bad about that? Next, they will discuss thinking traps. These include working with blinders, which means only seeing negative and overlooking the good in a situation, the repetitor, which if it happened once, it's always going to happen that way. The catastrophizer is always thinking the worst ever is going to happen. The avoider stays away from situations they may think are scary without trying first. The mind reader, which jumps to conclusions about a person, thing, or situation without the facts. The shoulds, I should always be perfect, I shouldn't make mistakes. And finally, the perfectionist, which means setting expectations that are too high. Perfection is not a human option. And then finally, they assign the show that I can task for the next session. During session seven, they will review the concept of anxious self-talk and reinforce changing anxious self-talk into coping self-talk and introduce the concept of problem solving and develop and use problem solving strategies to better manage anxiety. They'll start off the session by reviewing the show that I came tasked in the previous week and review and discuss the first two steps in the fear plan. Then the therapist will introduce the A step, which is attitudes and actions that can help. The therapist explains to the child that in addition to recognizing their anxious feelings and self-talk, they may find it helpful to take some action that will help change the situation so that they can proceed despite their anxiety. The therapist will discuss the concept of problem solving by describing the problem solving steps to develop an idea for changing something. Step one is defining the problem. What is the anxious situation? Step two is exploring potential alternative solutions but be careful not to evaluate yet. What might someone do to make this solution less fearful? Step three is evaluating the potential alternative solutions. Which solutions are feasible alternatives? Do any alternative solutions not make sense or are any not feasible? Step four is selecting the, pre the preferred alternative. What might be one of the best things to do? What is the preferred solution? Make sure to modify the presentation to the child's development level in terms of the language and cognitive ability.
To demonstrate how to use this method of developing an idea, the therapist will begin with a simple, non-stressful problem. So for an example, you lost your shoes somewhere in the house, how might you go about finding them? Then the therapist models the steps for this. After this, the therapist sets up another similar situation for the child. They will together practice problem solving in anxious situations. By using the same process in low anxiety provoking situations with the therapist modeling the problem solving first, then inviting the child to tag along, and then again under higher anxiety provoking situations. To wrap it all up, the therapist will assign the show that I can task for the next week. Step 8 is introducing self-evaluation and self-reward, as well as reviewing skills already learned. The therapist will introduce a concept of evaluating or rating performance to the child, as well as rewarding themselves based on effort and performance. They will review all previously introduced skills by formalizing the four-step plan for the child. They will review the show that I can task from the previous session and introduce the final step in the fear plan, which is the R, results and rewards. The therapist will summarize the first three steps of recognizing their anxious feelings, recognizing their anxious self-talk, and applying coping self-talk, and taking some action that will help the child change the situation. The therapist will introduce the idea of rating their performance and rewarding themselves for efforts to cope and to stay in a situation despite their anxiety. Finally, they will discuss the concept of self-rating and reward. They will begin this by describing a reward as something that is given when you're pleased with the work that was completed. The therapist will give examples of rewards by using a story about teaching a dog a trick. If the dog learns the trick, he gets a reward such as a bone or a pat on his head. But the whole trick isn't learned all at once. It takes small steps that get closer and closer to the complete trick and the owner rewards the puppy for doing the part of the trick or whenever the puppy gets something right. And the therapist will introduce the idea of self-rating by suggesting that people can rate themselves and reward or punish themselves for their own behavior. Session nine is the second parent meeting. The therapist will encourage the parents to continue cooperating in the treatment program and answer any questions that the parents have. They will provide additional information about the second half of the treatment, so the exposure tasks the child will be doing with the therapist, and explain what was explained to the child in session eight. There will be an opportunity for parents to discuss their concerns and learn, the therapist will learn more about the situations in which the child becomes anxious and they were also offer specific ways that the parents can be involved in the second half of treatment. Session 10 focuses on practicing in low anxiety provoking situations using exposure tasks. The session will begin by reviewing the show that I can task from the previous week. The therapist then will review the idea of progressing from learning to practicing the new skills by reminding the child that in today's session, they will begin to practice the newly acquired skills in real life situations the therapist will describe the change in the type of activities that are forthcoming. Instead of learning about the child's thoughts and feelings and learning how to develop coping strategies, the focus will shift to practicing the skills and coping strategies, sometimes in the session and sometimes out of the office in the real life situation. They will then practice using imaginal exposure in low anxiety provoking situations. For each imaginal exposure task practice, there is a preparation and practice section. For preparation, they will describe the chosen practice situation and discuss developing a situation on the 0 to 8 SUD scale or the feelings thermometer. For practice, the therapist will pretend that they're the child and model thinking through the situation out loud while using the fear plan to help themselves recall the steps to cope. It will be a coping model. It won't be perfect. They'll just be used as an illustration. Then the therapist will ask the child to think through a slightly different but similar scenario using the same props. During the imaginary exposure, the child provides a SUDS rating before and after the exposure tasks, as well as every minute or so during the exposure. 
Then they will practice using in vivo exposure in low anxiety provoking situations. For each in vivo exposure task practiced, there will be a preparation and practice step. In preparation for the in vivo exposure task, the therapist and child develop a fear plan for coping with the upcoming anxious situation and enter it into the Coping Cat workbook. The therapist and child negotiate a reward given for completing the in vivo task. Then they will practice using props as appropriate and the therapist will ask the child to use their new skill in an actual situation that has been practiced through the imaginal procedure with the therapist accompanying the child as they carry out the exercise. If the child is unable to continue at any point, the therapist encourages the self-reward of the partial success that they did. Throughout the in vivo exercise, the child provides a SUDS rating before and after as well as during the exposure task. Then to wrap up the session, they will briefly review relaxation exercises and plan the exposure tasks for the next session. They will use the situation cards or fear ladder that has been previously filled out and the child and therapist decide on the situation that the child will practice in the next session. Then the therapist will assign the show that I can task for the next session. Session 11 focuses on practicing in low anxiety provoking situations using exposure tasks. The therapist and child will continue to practice and apply the skills for coping with anxiety in situations that produce low levels of anxiety for the child. They will review the show that I can task, as well as continue practicing using in vivo exposure in low anxiety provoking situations. For each in vivo exposure task practice, there's a preparation and a practice step. To prepare for the in vivo exposure task, the therapist and child develop a fear plan for coping with the upcoming anxious situation and enter it in the Coping Cat workbook. The therapist and child will negotiate a reward to be given for completing the in vivo task. The therapist will then ask the child to practice the situation they have role played. If the child is unable to continue at any point, the therapist encourages self reward for partial success. Throughout the in vivo exercise, the child provides a SUDS rating before and after the exposure task. Finally, they will plan exposure tasks for the next session using the situation cards and fear ladder the child and therapist decide on the situation the child will practice in the next session. The session will be a moderate level of anxiety. And finally, the show that I can task is assigned. Session 12 is practicing in moderately anxiety provoking situations using exposure tasks. They will practice applying the skills for coping with anxiety in imaginal and in vivo situations that produce moderate levels of anxiety in the child. They'll start off by reviewing the show that I can task for the last week. Then they will practice using imaginal exposures in moderately anxiety provoking situations. Then practice using in vivo exposures in moderately anxiety provoking situations. Then they will choose the task for the next session and assign the show that I can task for the next session. Session 13 focuses on practicing in moderately anxiety provoking situations using exposure tasks. The child will practice applying the skills for coping with anxiety in a real life situation that produces moderate levels of anxiety in the child. They will begin by reviewing the show that I can task from the previous session followed by practicing using in vivo exposure in a moderately anxiety provoking situation. They will plan an exposure task for the next session, and then they will assign the show that I can task for the next session. In session 14, they will practice applying the skills for coping with anxiety in imaginal and real life situations that produce high levels of anxiety. They'll review the show that I can task from the last week, then practice using imaginal exposure in high anxiety provoking situations, and then they will practice using in vivo exposure in high anxiety provoking situations. After that, they will plan the exposure situation for the next week, and then the therapist will assign the show that I can task for the next week. Session 15 focuses on practicing in high anxiety provoking situations using exposure tasks. The child will practice applying skills for coping with anxiety in real situations that produce high levels of anxiety in the child. They will review the previous show that I can task, 
followed by practicing using in vivo exposure in high anxiety provoking situations. They will then plan a closing exposure task for the next session. The therapist will discuss with the child the end of treatment by reminding the child that the next session is the last one and will recap what the child has accomplished and learned, emphasizing his or her progress during the previous week. Finally, they will assign the last show that I can task. Session 16 is the final session. The therapist will provide a final practice task applying the skills in a real life exposure that produces high levels of anxiety in the child. They will produce their commercial, preview and summarize the training program, and make plans with the parents to help the child maintain and generalize newly acquired skills. And then they will bring close to the therapeutic relationship. They will review the previous show that I can task and then conduct a final exposure task in a high anxiety provoking situation. Following the exposure task, think through and talk about the child's performance. Note the progress since the start of treatment. Help the child note success of any or all parts of the fear plan. The therapist will summarize their treatment program and bring closure to the relationship. They will recap with the parents and child what has been accomplished over the course of treatment. The therapist will give the child their certificate of completion and talk about all the successes that they have achieved. Then the therapist will mention that they will call in four weeks to check in.